Hold on, it's my schoolboy nine. This is weird. The most disturbing Instagram account? This is strange. Do you see this? So this is the video we're watching, the one right here. But then this makes me uncomfortable. This makes me uncomfortable. Are we ready? Are we ready? We good? Where's Vic at? Get Vic in here. All right, we're, we're gonna, okay. Let me know if it's too loud or too low. Let's get it. Um, and I know, I know now, cause I see the audio. I see the audio on my laptop or, or my PC. So I, I know it's on. Capiche? Creepy accounts pretending to be Refuse kids. Refuse to believe this is real? I came real? across a reel randomly, and it's led me down this weird rabbit hole of people using AI or dressing up pretending to go to school. They all seem to have high heels, check images in them. Is this an age play thing or something more sinister? Literally anything Good job, you can I see trying to look for answers. This post was made to the subreddit r slash Instagram by the user numeruscut792 on April 15th, 2024. It featured screenshots of three bizarre looking Instagram pages they had encountered earlier that day, with OP expressing concern that something truly disturbing was happening with these users. My question is, before, do y'all get like the, the Instagram accounts that'll like view, your, view or like your story? Or they'll be in like comments of like, um, like for the NBA example, it'll be like the first three comments. They're like, click here to see CP or click here to see, um, team getting, um, skibbidied. And it's like, like, how Instagram is, Instagram or Meta, they're such a big company. They can't, they can't delete these bots. They can't like filter out certain words. I mean, obviously they try to filter out certain words and like, there's been like, preventative things like now on your store you can see like at the very bottom of that oh these accounts might be fake and you can like scroll through them right but if they're able to do that i'm sure it's like a solution to like you know kill all the bots entirely you know like you can't make an instagram account without um without a phone number or something like wouldn't that make sense wouldn't that makes that's just me that's just me i'm tired of seeing them bowl what's up frost yo you want to see the gains Mm, I scared the whole UK. That I don't know if y'all heard that outside. Something just collapsed. Cause I just I was mm, and then you see over there, the over there the the thing collapsed because of my muscles. Let me get to this video, y'all. And those in the thread agreed. What the actual fuck? Found all of them and blocked them all. Truth Sticks 11 is seriously creepy to me. I've been trying to find more about them, but can hardly find anything. Very weird account, to say the least. The three accounts apparently belong to three different children. However, when combing through their posts, the content seems to imply something much more bizarre was afoot. Something truly disturbing. This post would be the start of a story that would eventually be picked up and shared all across the online world, becoming one of the more notorious internet mysteries in recent memory. As these accounts were being revealed, to this yo, investigation into one of the most depraved oddities ever found. What's this problem? This is the emerging story of Smart Schoolboy Nine. Are y'all scared? Are y'all pooping your pants yet? I pooped my pants like three times. We'll return after these started. messages. Before we get too far down this rabbit hole, I want to first thing. <laughs> got a link with UK bro for the Fortnite stuff. <laughs> Fortnite stay on his mind, quite literally. Oh my gosh. All right, we got to skip his sponsorship. Sorry. He looks like Mr. Beast. This was the bio of the first account pictured in the Reddit post, an account named TruthSticks11, which was said to be operated by a 12-year-old boy and his mother. Back in October of 2021, the duo would make their very first post, kicking things off on a somewhat concerning note, though not for their own page, but instead, another account on the platform. So, that's the account run by a man pretending to be a boy. <laughs> The video was so that that already sounds like a grown man like that doesn't sound that doesn't sound right to me does anybody else agree like that's not hey hey i'm 12 years old 
I'm 12 years old. This person is trying to run my account. You see what I'm saying? was created and posted by the mother for the sole purpose of warning others of a specific user who had been posing as a child online when in actuality he was a grown man who did this in order to get close to and exploit other children across the platform. It's the grim reality of this online world as predators will do just about anything to get closer to children and it's a reality often unrealized or even ignored by parents which makes it almost refreshing that this mother was out here trying to raise awareness. These posts would become the crux of the account early on. They would call out this user and their many accounts again and again, eventually going more in depth about what this person would actually do, claiming that they had a strange perversion to dressing up as a young schoolboy. Does he wish he were a young boy in a school classroom, looking nice and being successful at school? Yes. This theme of calling out online predators would remain consistent throughout the years on Truth I'm Sticks 11. Video up. I'm However, after some time, the mother behind the account began to use the page for its initially intended purpose, to share photos of her son. The photos began reasonably normal. That which, doesn't, I'm sorry, that doesn't look like a, a kid. That's a grown man. Show this young boy studying at school, accepting awards from their principal, and even school presentations in which their son had attended, with the captions often boasting about how intelligent the young boy was. Though over time, the photos began to grow stranger. Okay. They this is off, weird. Almost as if they Does that look like me? Does that look like me? Were AI generated. And on top of this, they began to appear heavily edited in an almost inexplicable manner, with deep red lipstick mm. often being added, which was enunciated by his face being turned pure white. This unsettling trend would continue from here, as with each passing post, the photos grew less authentic and more surreal. Like, is this some sort of like ARG or something? Like, is this somebody, like, like just trying to make... You guys know the um the Mandela ca catalog? I used to watch videos about that. Um, Pyrocynical would react to them, and MatPat used to make um theories on them. So is this person trying to recreate, like, like one of those? Like, you, you guys know what that is, right? Where, like, you don't... Like, it isn't necessarily a game. It's, like, like, like you're viewing something as if you're in the universe of that thing. Right, say if it's like a website or I don't know. It's mainly like websites, right? Um, what's the thing? It's one that's on the top of my head. The, uh, it's like a yellow puppet, and he, I forget his name, but it's one of those type of things where you go through and it's like a whole story behind it. And you know, is this one of those? Is what I'm trying to say because it looks like it, you know. Until they became straight up disturbed even sickening. These bizarre edits spilled over past just the images too, as the posts began to appear as disjointed collages, often showcasing multiple grotesque images and paragraphs about how much this user loved school. And this wasn't the only shift either. At some point, the son behind the account began posting content that allegedly came directly from him, saying things like, my really cool mom asked me if I'd like to post, and I said, yes, please. He even shared supposed videos that he had filmed of himself, which were equally as unconvincing as his photos, and somehow even more chilling. Mm. Sorry, sorry, I can't. Sorry. The boy even shows off his singing in one of the clips. This is like the videos of the Nuggets. You guys know what I'm talking about? Hold on, let me see if I can pull it up. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta turn it. The brightness. Him. You can't tell me that doesn't look like him. Oh my gosh. Oh snap! I started playing a video. Yeah, I'm not even on the scene. My bad. Oh, their voice sounds off. Man, had it on. I just searched up the guy. Good. Good, good, I can't even get the fucking words out, dude. The guy, good, 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 oh. Sorry, I, I watched those videos in my spirit. The account was overall anomalous and extremely off putting. And though this content was visually alarming, another aspect made it even more so concerning, as over time, many of the images began to resemble CP, showcasing Whoa. these fake AI children in explicit positions, with their faces sometimes even Ew. being photoshopped onto scantily dressed adult bodies. 
One thing is blatantly obvious about the Truth Sticks account. The supposed child behind it is not real. Even in the more passable photos at the very beginning, there's evidence to suggest- Yeah, like, look at his arm right, right there. Right under Xylophone's message, right? That doesn't look like a real arm. That's too skinny. This isn't a real person. That's that these were likely AI as well. And based on the disturbed, borderline illegal content that this page featured, it seemed more than likely that whoever was behind this page was not an innocent mother concerned for the welfare of other children, but instead, a predatory individual themselves. And this wasn't their only account. The second page featured on the Reddit post belonged to a user named GirlChloe12 and bore striking similarities to Truth Sticks. The page was also supposedly run by a child and monitored by their parent. Bizarrely, they also posted frequently about the dangers of online predators, with the wording of these posts and the editing hmm. being essentially the exact same as Truth Sticks, just not as over the top. These two accounts even frequently interacted with each other, thus providing a substantial link on its own. But by far the most compelling link between these pages is one that is easy to miss at a glance, with that being a blatant obsession with high-heeled mini boots. These shoes were mentioned or shown in virtually every single post made by these two users. At playtime, I'm sometimes running around with my really cool heeled footwear I wear with my uniform. After coming home from school, education isn't over for the day once the blue blazer, gray jersey, knee tie, white shirt, tailored close fit gray trousers, and black heeled mini boots are in the world. My question is, is this- I'm assuming that this is all one person, right? This is all one person trying to run some sort of elaborate scheme. But what's with the boots? I'm sure he's probably going to get to it, but like, isn't that a little weird? And how does somebody find this? How, how does somebody come across this? Like, how do you get recommended something like this? Like, I really think... My, my theory is, right? So this person was trying to make some sort of L drip. What are you talking about? Are you talking about me? Or are you talking about the the the, <laughs> the little boy? The a ARG little boy. Um, So my thing is this person was deranged, right? This person probably did a lot of a lot of uh social media browsing watch a lot of matpad right so they wanted to make their own arg right and i already explained what that was i'm not gonna explain it again and this person obviously clearly doesn't have any friends clearly is a weirdo clearly is a predator um they they were like yo i'm gonna make this but then they started getting deranged more and more deranged and then it ended up being it ended up being this it ended up being that this weird rabbit hole of them being children wearing the the, the heeled mini boots and it, it just went further from there so th that's my theory just the game theory hash rest up mad pat yeah wardrobe no matter what they discussed school uniforms and mini boots were always a talking point which adds confirmation to something that is already becoming apparent this is fetish content, not too unlike the bizarre accounts in the Pipergate rabbit hole. Fetish what is that? What is this? What is this? And centered around children. And what makes the Chloe account so disturbing is that AI was seemingly not used, and rather the images seem to be of actual children. Oh. Despite this disturbing distinction, these two accounts are cut from the same cloth, and all signs point to them being created by the same person. A person who, despite their constant warnings of the dangers of adults pretending to be children online, seems to be doing the exact same thing, as part of some sort of fetish, the extent of which we'll discuss later. This but is for now, weird. one thing was for certain. These pages were not run by children, or their parents. So, who created them? Well, that brings us to our third and final account shown in that initial post. Smart Schoolboy 9. Smart Schoolboy 9 was much the same as the other two accounts. They warned of online predators, obsessed over high-heeled mini boots and school uniforms, and posed as a child despite clearly not being one. But Smart Schoolboy was different in one key aspect. The person behind the account was pretending to be a child, but they were doing so in a much more apparent manner, as they didn't use AI or stolen images of other kids to form their identity. And instead, they used photos of... Oh... Themselves. No. <laughs> we can't. We're, we're getting too deep, man. This is weird. This is getting strange. In the images posted on the account, we see what appears to be a fully grown man dressed in a schoolboy's uniform. His face is painted pure white and has bright red lipstick. And he's, of course, wearing high heeled mini boots. Characteristics that were all utilized across the other accounts. Only this time, it was done on himself, as he poses as a child, pretending to go to school, as well as pretending to go through other life events common for preteens. And the photos aren't even the most disturbing part, as the account consists primarily of videos. Oh. Uh, yo, get off the camera! Get your junk off the camera! What is he doing? Let me know if you like school as well.
The videos are all incredibly off-putting. Can he put his tongue back in his mouth? Ugh. Some show him arriving home from school. Others show him claiming to be on the bus heading towards school. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm on the school bus. And other videos showing him doing whatever this is. Ew! <laughs> what is going on? In the process of sticking his tongue out, appearing to be part of his fetish. Oh my gosh! As much. Oh! <laughs> can, can anybody explain? Can anybody explain that? What? <laughs> What's going on? This can't be real. This cannot be real. What? <laughs> Yo! 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 <laughs> Like the other accounts, his this is strange. Is sexual, in its own bizarre way. Wait, wait, wait. He said it was sexual. I don't. Uh. In fact, there's a video of him with his full outfit on, where he shows himself staring into a mirror as he appears to pleasure himself. What? As he's D hold on, let me get off that screen, that. cause that screen. He was jerking it just now. <laughs> he, he he was he was stroking his Fortnite Tilly battle pass. What? This account is by far the most sickening part of this whole rabbit hole, and also the most important. Interspersed throughout his page are a few examples of what this individual's voice sounds like. This is quite good. <laughs> which just so happens to be the same voice heard in the very first clip shown on the Truth Sticks account. Man, pretending. See? A boy. <laughs> Meaning that this full-grown adult man is the one behind this entire rabbit hole. He's the one on these accounts pretending to be a child and their mother, getting some sort of sick satisfaction from whatever this is. And the worst part is, these activities aren't just kept behind closed doors. As we can see on numerous occasions, videos of him walking around- I was about to say, I was about to say, does this dude go outside? Does this go dude go outside? He clearly does. What time does he go outside? And does anybody see him? Because he's obviously going out at a time where nobody could witness this. Because if I saw this dude walking down the street, I'd be concerned. I'd be extremely concerned. Because, like, yo, if I'm walking with a child, say if I'm with one of my nieces or nephews, right? And I'm walking and I see this guy, I'm going to pull him to the side. Because it's like, yo, he's in a tight school schoolboy outfit. And he, ha he has his tongue out. And he, he doesn't care about how he looks. He could be doing anything. This is crazy. Outside in a public space, with his full outfit and face paint on. And I'm thinking he lives in like, like, like Wyoming or something, somewhere, somewhere bare. This looks like a, a lived in like city. He's probably roaming the streets of New York. It, even worse, he's probably roaming the streets of Philadelphia. Somebody needs to take care of this guy. What? It's truly one of the strangest things that I've ever seen, and making sense of what this all is is extremely difficult. But based on the information found from this first Reddit post, a few likely conclusions can be put forward. This man is clearly attracted to the idea of being a kid, and I think OP was correct when they speculated that this was some sort of age play thing, but it's also clearly much more than that too, as based on the images that he's created himself, he clearly has some sort of attraction to other children as well, as he's quite literally created faux CP the likes of which is so disturbing that I can't even really describe it here either. He's creating fetish content, and he's using the likeness of children, and also some children that are clearly very real people, to do so. That much is obvious. But there was also the possibility that he was pretending to be a kid in order to exploit other children across the internet. At this point though, this was merely speculation, with much of the Smart Schoolboy 9 case remaining a mystery, and the rabbit hole was only getting deeper from here. Community? He has a community of these people? Months after this rabbit hole was introduced to the online world, the story began to be shared all across the internet, most notably on the r slash internet mystery subreddit, where the case really took off. There, internet sleuths began uncovering just how vast this web of accounts actually was, as it wasn't just these three pages. No, Whoa. there seemed to be over a dozen, and likely even more that we still haven't found, as he's created his own sort of community, his own little world, where across each page he pretends to be a child, with these accounts typically following each other and frequently interacting, seemingly to make these characters appear as though they have real friends. On one of these pages, 12 Stockwell Joanne, he poses as a 14-year-old girl, using more AI images to depict explicit positions of this manufactured child, yeah. which I obviously am not going to show here. Though much like his Chloe account, he also shows images of very real young girls. But this isn't the most concerning part of this account, as on numerous occasions, he's shown images of children at a playground. 
which he may have taken himself. This is crazy. Cause like I thought it was weird. I I I, I still think this is weird, right? And I, I think my brain is it always it always goes to who's watching this person. Who's in this person's life and who allowed this person to get to the point to where they are now to where they're doing this kind of deplorable nonsense, right? And it's like, does this person have any parents? Does this person have any siblings or maybe like, like friend, obviously no friends if he's doing this, if he's making his own, right? Um, but like where, where is like the human interaction in his life? You get what I'm saying? So it's like. It's, this is scary cuz imagine imagine he comes into my room right now what what i'm i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to what you call it i'm gonna go to brb i make sure i add the mic source so i can hear me <coughs> in minecraft though in minecraft i would never hurt nobody though i i would never hurt nobody though this fantasy of being a schoolgirl and taking part in these school-centric activities is something carried over throughout multiple of his accounts, with his most common alias being Stephanie, of which he has numerous different accounts featuring that same name. Yeah, I'm Stephanie. This Stephanie character claims to be a 12-year-old aspiring poet, with accounts all across the internet, many of which showcasing examples of her poetry, which carries on those same distinct sexual undertones. I race to complete my poems when I've got an early start. Heart racing, mixed rhythms, maximizing miracles. Rice with rap and on the map. My Kennington, London syllables. Dancing though, I know my underwear might show if I lean forward. Good. Stephanie Stansfield, 12. But digging even deeper, her poetry has even seemingly been featured in various articles and even newspapers, showcasing that this rabbit hole extends far past just the online world. This act is clearly their obsession, and he's been doing this for years, with the earliest examples that I could find coming from all the way back in 2018. And this Stephanie character seems to be his go-to alias. Unfortunately, that's a bar. In the literal sense. Oh. Whoa. As in one of his Whoa. Movies, this Stephanie character, he dresses as her, wearing a wig and a dress, as he pretends to be a twelve-year-old girl. Like he clearly lives somewhere. Like the neighbors. Do does he not have neighbors? How does he provide for himself? How does he live in this building? in the space and he, is there some sort of disability check or something is there some sort of some like somebody goading him on to do this because where's the money coming from he clearly doesn't have a job who would hire somebody like this especially if they if they do any sort of any sort of background checks and they find this nonsense who's gonna hire this guy where's the money coming from oh my gosh questions questions that need to be answered Almost immediately after this case began gaining traction, the true magnitude of this rabbit hole was revealed. Across every single account are countless depraved posts and oddities that all could warrant discussion, but by far the most important discoveries were those that didn't actually occur on his own page, and rather, the pages of other actual children. Do you like school? I do. It is good. You have some cool shirts, but I have to wear school uniforms to school. It is nice, but casual isn't allowed, and it's quite hot here in the UK, as the month of June suddenly got warmer. These are two examples out of many that show Smart School Bonine reaching out and attempting to befriend young children Apparently online. he lives in the UK. So Findale Dingle, he's coming to get... What if this is Findale? What if this is Findale? We're talking to this this UK guy who we... All we know, he, he's in university right now and he day drinks. This could be Findale. <laughs> Yo, Fidel, we found you. Face reveal. From bad people, mm. stating that it happens to most boys in our age group. But stay safe, stay cool, don't be dismayed by creeps. This is our best evidence that these accounts weren't just made for age play. No, he's actually posing as a child in order to make friends with other children. And given his overtly sexual interests and aversion to CP, it's not hard to gather why he was doing this. And these examples Average are only what we found so far. It's possible that there are dozens, or who knows, maybe even hundreds of other comments out there hidden on unknown children's accounts. This is predatory behavior. The man behind Schoolboy 9 is a predator. And in case there was still any doubt of whether or not this was a sexual thing, here's what he had to say. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. I can't sit still in class. Thighs jerking? <laughs> what? Being a 13-year-old girl. But have his tactics actually worked? 
Well, the frightening thing is, no one knows if he's actually been successful or not, or even what specifically he's looking for. We just know that he's trying to reach kids, as evidenced not only by his comments, but by the fact that he's solely following children on all of these pages. And though it's easy to look at these accounts and know that something is off, for children, it's not that simple, especially when there's pages showcasing photos of actual kids. Which brings up another frightening detail. Many of the images he's used of children have not been traced back to their original creator, and some seem to appear for the very first time online publicly on this man's pages, which might mean that he was sent them privately. Ugh. There's even one image that David posted on his schoolboy account, which shows another kid that he claimed to be on a playdate with, though it's impossible to say if this is real or not. For now, we just don't know for sure. Though given the fact that he's reaching out to children, posting fetish content centered around children, and has even potentially photographed kids in the wild, one thing is for certain, Smart Schoolboy 9 needs to be stopped. Finding this man and reporting him to law enforcement quickly became the top priority for those investigating the case. And luckily, he left several glaring clues behind that made this process a whole lot easier. On numerous occasions across his many pages, he would post images and videos of specific locations, even showing streets and mentioning very particular areas in his poems, all of which centered around the London area, immediately giving us an idea of where he was located. And that wasn't all. I mentioned how the alias of Stephanie was one that he used more so than any other, but what's interesting is that there was another name used just as often across his accounts, brought up time and time again, though it's a name that he never seemed to call any of his characters. Instead, he simply referred to this person as a stepbrother, or a father, or even a friend from school, despite never actually picturing him, just mentioning his name, David. And sure enough, after connecting a few dots, it would be revealed that this person's actual name was in fact David. David Alter, with a man being 59 years old. Whoa. 59 years old. So, I can't even... I can't even think of what... I, I, just thinking about this old of a man. How long has he been doing this? Where is his family at? Because realistically, if he's been doing this since 2018... 2018 was... Two... Six years ago? And... Where have we through his life? He's... <laughs> close to dying right um if he's been doing this for six years no he's been known to do this for six years he's gonna been doing this after right he's could have had this going he could he could be retired he could have retired at like 50 or whatever right um and he he's just been doing this i'm assuming because obviously he's not all the way there he's probably been doing this because wh whoever in his life probably left him and he started yo i used to have a kid in in um in grade school and then he started thinking about it thinking about it then he became the kid in grade school and it uh, and it just became fetish content he, he got so so high off of him being him him being a a school student that he started imagining it too bad and it's like yo yo i, I love i love being a school girl that's what he's thinking, not me. That don't clip that. Don't clip that out of context, yo. Whoa. That's crazy. This is crazy. Old. Here we go. I was about to say. What happened? At the moment, it doesn't appear that David has any past <laughs> criminal trying to be convictions super or documentation. That is more than a behavior. super senior But we do dude. know that thanks to the investigation done on Reddit and Discord, he is currently being investigated by local authorities. He needs to get. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean he needs to get? Whoa. Don't say that! These are minors! Whoa. And shine some more light on who this person actually is. As for the time being, the only other information that we really know about David is that he likes to write poetry and he makes music. Oh! This is the shit Damar... Because whenever we play Fortnite and he wants to... We're over the... Whatchamacallit? We're over the... uh. The, the the vault he stands over and plays his little demonic song and i tell him yo i don't want to hear that and th it immediately makes me move this is this is the jam track this is the jam track on fortnite that he'd be playing and his name also appears in a random newspaper where he's discussing the importance of kids wearing school uniforms and that's really all we have at the moment. It's crazy. Though there is one very important aspect that we have yet to talk about in relation to this man, with that being David's mental state. 
Some believe that David is a mentally unwell individual who clearly doesn't know the extent of what they are doing. Now, even if this is the case, his behavior still needs to be stopped, and he needs to be given proper help to assure that no one else gets hurt by his actions. But it is important to note that David is far more intelligent than he lets on, as his personal accounts show us that he is fairly well-spoken and articulate. And throughout his problematic content, most of his bad grammar and strange verbiage seems to be his attempts at more authentically trying to replicate a child. But it's impossible to know for sure. But what we do know is that David is extremely manipulative, with his response to the situation and other clues littered across his accounts showing us that he seems to know what he's doing, and he knows that it's wrong. Since the exposure of David's accounts, he hasn't silently slithered away like most other predators would. Instead, he's actually responded on more than a few occasions, lashing out to those who have DM'd him, Wait, calling them the perverts and predators. He even left a comment on his Joanne account seemingly directed at himself, writing, You are really sad. If that's your name, David, be honest with yourself. You're 50, as you said elsewhere. You reply to me, a girl, as if I'm your buddy? No chance ever. This but that's the thing, like, what 13-year-old what talks like that? No, like... If I'm, kids are dumb, right? I was a dumb kid. Everybody in chat has been a dumb kid. What, what kid speaks like this? And correct me if I'm wrong, right? At 13, I think I was in eighth, eighth grade. Like, never was a dumb kid, you sure? <laughs> You're a dumb adult now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in a comedy, but I would, I would talk in memes. Me at 13 was low key a genius. All right, now everybody's glazing themselves. Now everybody's glazing. Okay, um, I guess I was, I was the only idiot when I was 13. Okay, fuck, dude. This is something David does all the time. It's projection, and it started all the way back at the beginning of this rabbit hole. So. That's the account run yep. by oh, okay. a man pretending to be a boy. <laughs> and he continued posting these predator exposés, along with other warnings about predators on the internet across every page he made, each of which being hyper-specific to his own predatory ways and fetishes. The things he accuses others of are blatant projections of his own dark vices. And I can think of two reasons why. Number one, that this makes his account look safer to other parents and children. It gives the appearance that he's not another internet creep because he's actively calling them out. It's a way to build trust in order to befriend and exploit kids. And number two, he knows what he's doing is wrong. And this is his bizarre way of self-reporting. Probably- I think it's a combination of both. I think he's, he, he is self-reporting, right? But I think it's more of like, um, like he's trying to use reverse psychology. Like if I'm calling out predators online, who, what parent is going to realistically go further than that? You know? So like, think about it. What my parents, whenever I was on my technology, they had little to no sort of supervision over what I was doing. Right. And I was never the type of kid to look up anything crazy. You know, I would just be on YouTube and whatnot, like, you know, most normal kids. Two out of four ads. Dang! But, um, yeah, realistically, I never, I never had, like, that much supervision online. And my parents, although they tried to be proficient, they weren't as proficient at protecting me from seeing crazy things online from time to time, you know? So, it's like... Like now, in a day and age where I feel like I'd be able to protect any kids that I know from online turmoil, like kids shouldn't be using the internet. Like, just realistically, they shouldn't have free access to the internet. And it, it's it's crazy to say because that's who I that's how I grew up to be so cool, right? Because I've I've been chronically online since since before I can remember, right? But you you see so much online that it's like, yo, you're better, uh, yeah, don't gas yourself up, buddy, okay. You're better to not have it than live with it, you know? I feel like I'd be such a, I wouldn't say better person, I'd be a much more conscious person if I didn't have, it's not an option, so I'm gonna shoot this guy. If I didn't have access, as much access to the internet as I did, you know, instead I used it for, you know, entertainment. I used it for, <coughs> oh, excuse me, as a resource. Um, I, I used it, I, I used it for a lot of facets of my life, right? Um, 
But I feel like if you cut down that reliance, um, kids are going to be more inclined to be kids. You know, like, it's okay to, you know, have a favorite game or something or, you know, text your friends online. But most kids that I have interacted with the past couple of years, that's all they do. Like, it's no in-between. When I was younger, I liked to read books. I also like to play my game, but I knew it was like balance, you know, I, I like to play with toys. Kids I know nowadays, they don't carry toys on them like that anymore. And it's like weird because I would come to school, I would sneak my toys to school and be like, yo, this this is, this is my life. I wouldn't trade, I wasn't the type of kid to trade. Um, but yeah, like the whole summer when I worked, I think I see like the girls with plushies I wouldn't really count that, but for the sake of argument, we'll count that. Um, that'd be like two or three, and it was just one kid who would bring in toys. And that was it. Kids don't, kids aren't kids anymore, and it's really weird. I bought my 3DS to school once, and it got stolen, then I got it back at the end of the day. <laughs> Yo, tell me why I, um, we were on this trip. So when you go on the trips, everybody bought their DS. If you didn't bring your DS on a trip, you were lame. I made sure my DS was charged and ready in my pocket, in my room. By the time I left, left it under my pillow or something so my parents wouldn't see it, right? And I remember this one time we came back from a trip. Everybody was playing Mario Kart. So DS, DS has obviously had the um, the connect play where you could play as like certain characters. You can play as Shy Guy on Mario Kart, but you didn't have access to the full game. You know what I'm saying? Download play. It was called download play. And I remember somebody gave me their copy of Mario Kart. I forget the reason why, but they gave it to me and they forgot. And I'm not sure if it was like the last day of school or something, or it was like over a break um, that I didn't see that person for a while again. But I never gave it back. I have no clue where that copy is, but I never gave that copy of Mario Kart back. I played that thing to death, dude. Oh my gosh, I love Mario Kart. Um, I used to burn niggas for games. I'm a changed man. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's the same man that he was, uh, 10 years ago. Make himself feel better about what he's doing. And it's obvious based on just how accurate his claims <laughs> against others are to him. Does he wish he were a young boy in a school classroom looking nice and being successful at school? Yes. And these claims are made over and over again, as each time he calls someone out, he's further exposing himself. Which becomes more concerning when he realizes that these projections seemingly aren't strictly pedophilic. Within those eerily familiar expose posts he made on Truth Sticks 11, he mentions how this user not only wanted to exploit children online, but they wanted to kill them as well. What? As he mentions that this user has a clear interest in cannibalizing kids, and even performing ritualistic sacrifices on them. And based on how accurate all of the other exposures are to himself, I have no reason to believe that this isn't part of his MO as well, as crazy as that may sound. This also seems to coincide with some of the content he's posted that I can't- This- I didn't think this was gonna get more crazy, so he- wants to touch kids and then now he wants to eat them this is weird show you. as some of these photos show children edited in contorted positions including some where he's added what appears to be rope to give the illusion that they're tied up and what makes this even more disturbing is that on his accounts he's posted numerous photos in the version of he's of okay. schools, literally on nearby secluded trails and even some where he discusses what time school starts and ends saying that he likes to be awake and ready for it there's even photos that show other children outside from a distance almost as if David was stalking them. This is highly concerning. Even if we don't know truly how low this man's perversions get, he is still far too close to children, which is perfectly encapsulated by this photo of him on a school playground during the day. And with his disturbing desires, I don't even want to imagine what he's capable of. Which brings us to the final piece of content that I need to talk about. Chasing another boy running in heeled mini boots. This was the text shown on screen during a short video posted onto one of David's many accounts. And in the video, we see the man pointing the camera at himself, showing his full face of white makeup and red lipstick. Did he fart? Is he farting? This video is edited more egregiously than any others I've seen across his page, with multiple explicit images and huge emojis covering the majority of the screen. Though just barely enough of the footage can be seen that shows David as he turns the camera around, revealing a young boy. Oh my gosh. Oh Who he then proceeds my to. gosh. That is scary. Pray for that little boy, because imagine, imagine 
say this is like right as he comes from school, right? And he he comes, he's coming home, stops by the playground, sees this weird old man dressed in his uniform, and he starts chasing him. Oh my gosh! If this happened to me, if this happened to me, I would be panicking. I would. <sighs> this is one time. This is one time I was being chased by a dog, right? It was it was like one of those big alleyways where it was like a you can drive in, you know, like where people's garages are. So as I'm walking to school one day, I see a dog in the middle of it just sitting there. I'm like, "Yo, what's wrong with it?" It, it was just it, it 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 was just sitting just looking at me. So I walk up to it. I was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm walking, I'm getting closer. And this little ass dog chases me. He chases me. So he's like towards the middle, right? I'm coming. I'm coming towards him. And I stop like about a quarter way. He starts. Choom, and I start. I start running. I start running for my life. Luckily, my school is nearby. So I'm running. I'm running. And I finally look behind me. He's gone. So I'm like, thank God. So I'm on the corner. I'm on the corner where my school is. I'm about to walk down the street so I can go to school. And I see this family come out the uh, out this house. And I see this little ass dog staring at me like nothing fucking happened, dude. And they just looking at me. And they just smiling. I'm not sure if they saw me or heard me screaming at the top of my lungs because I was scared. But they were they were just smiling like I'm like, did you not did you not see what I just fucking went through did, did you not experience the terror i just did oh my gosh that was scary but that all that to say i i would be screaming yelling running as fast as i can if this ever happened to me thank god it's never happened to me and god bless this boy's heart for running dude oh my chase gosh. after giggling all the while whether this was an edited video or a real occurrence we don't currently know David's doings are a mystery that will take some time to unravel, and my hope is that law enforcement will be able to follow through and help shed some more light on this individual, and finally put an end to his twisted behavior. But at this point, only one thing is for sure. The story of Smart Schoolboy 9 is far from over. Oh boy. No information shown in this video has been archived and sent to law enforcement. Okay. Please do not attempt to contact David as uh, that may interfere with their investigation. Okay. Um, that was something. Um, hopefully they, they get him. Hopefully they, they capture him. Because that is, that's definitely something. And I hope this does not continue anytime soon.